Praise the Orc Chapter 71. Opening the North, 2. Numerous arrows flew through the air and became embedded in the behemoth's body. The behemoth stomped its feet as it ran. Shakan quickly retreated. The land that the behemoth passed became ruined. Shakan fired his arrows but the behemoth wasn't injured. It just continued chasing Shakan. Even if there was a wound, the demonic energy would just restore the body. The whole forest was helping the behemoth. Shakan resisted with the power he gained from chewing the heart but it wasn't enough. If Shakan's body was a pit, the behemoth was like an ocean. Looking at the scene, Croctor thought of the most necessary action right now. The behemoth was like an army with unlimited people and resources. There was no end. Croctor needed to block the spread of the demonic energy. But how could he cut off the magic power of the forest? Croctor looked at the darkness that spread over the forest like an abyss. It was the wall of darkness that the behemoth was guarding. This was the wall divided the rest of the continent and the north. No one could pass beyond this. Not exactly, there is a beast that has digested the body of something buried here and became a monster. Shakan's words popped into his head. There was something. At that moment, the demon's mouth at Croctor's waist started moving. The belt was pulling Croctor towards the darkness in front of him. Croctor turned around. Shakan and the behemoth were destroying the forest while fighting. Arrows flew towards the behemoth's body while the behemoth ignored all attacks and aimed for Shakan. Kuuuo. It was a fight between monsters that disregarded life and death. Shakan's desperate resistance was felt in his commitment. Hunters depend on each other. Shakan's voice was revived. That's right. They were now one. They had to rely on each other. They entrusted their lives to each other. Suddenly, Croctor locked gazes with Shakan who was fighting. It was just a quick glance but it was enough. He made up his mind. Croctor ran towards the darkness. As if it was waiting, the darkness welcomed Croctor. It was like when he was eaten by the demon's mouth. His spirit sank towards the darkness. Croctor's spirit was standing inside a cave. It was an endless tunnel. Croctor couldn't tell where to go. The belt at his waist led Croctor. It pulled him towards the front. The demon's mouth was reacting to something. But it couldn't be reversed. Croctor pulled out his great sword and walked in the direction that the belt pulled him. The inside was dark and his vision blurred. He walked for a while. A large area appeared. It was a space covered in darkness. In the middle of it, a giant body was lying down. The rotten stench of the corpse pierced his nose. Croctor raised his great sword and stepped towards it. It was an enormous beast that wasn't any smaller than the behemoth. But it didn't move like it was dead. Croctor sensed that it was something evil like the legend. The behemoth had become a monster after eating it. A terrible demonic energy was coming from the body. It was a darkness of an unprecedented depth that couldn't be compared to the behemoth's breath. It was the source that created the forest of creatures. He had to get rid of it. If he could get rid of it, the behemoth would lose its unlimited power. Croctor stepped forward. The demonic energy was like a swamp. Every movement was like walking through water resistance. Croctor firmly took a step forward. It seemed even bigger when he stood in front of it. What terrible thing would happen if this thing was alive? What was its identity? Croctor stabbed the body with his great sword. It entered without any resistance. Demonic energy emerged from the torn place. That density locked on Croctor. What is this? At that moment, the despairing demon's belt responded, you. Suddenly, the child of darkness stood beside Croctor. It was the appearance of the demon that he found inside the belt. It didn't care about Croctor as it stared at the body of the monster. Somehow it seemed sad. Poor thing, seemed to emerge from it. The demon raised a hand towards the monster's body. A whisper was heard again. Poor thing, Amen. Then the demon looked at Croctor. Croctor faced him. The dark eyes stared at him. Then the demon nodded and disappeared. At the same time, the steel teeth at his waist started rattling. What? The demon's mouth opened widely. 
It became wider, wider and wider. It was an unrealistic expansion. The greedy mouth was now bigger than Croctor. It felt like it could devour the entire cave. The mouth swallowed the beast's remains. The steel teeth surrounded the monster's huge body. There was a dull clang as the iron teeth closed. The demon's mouth slowly pushed the remains of the monster inside, like a boa constrictor devouring its prey. The dead beast was being eaten by the despairing demon's mouth. The demonic energy shook. Croctor gritted his teeth. His body was screaming from the overload of demonic energy. His veins bulged. But he wouldn't lose. Baltar. Croctor shouted. His battle shout rang out in the darkness. Baltar. He shouted again. Croctor endured the pain surging through his entire body. Some time passed. Croctor struggled for a while before he finally opened his eyes. There was nothing. The huge body and mouth that swallowed it had disappeared. Croctor stood alone in this wide cave. He looked down at the belt around his waist. The belt had changed. In the place where the steel teeth touched together, horns had sprouted. It seemed to be gradually taking the form of a demon's skull. The despairing demon's belt hero has grown. You still can't control the power of the belt. The power of the belt has been limited. The demon is sleeping. The system messages popped up. Croctor felt like his whole body was full of an unknown power. Then the landscape changed. Croctor stood within the forest of creatures again. Coo. The behemoth's roar could be heard. He looked back and saw that Shakan and the behemoth were still fighting. It seemed like Tio had returned as distinctively colorful magic power was striking the behemoth. Croctor ran towards the battle scene. Shakan's arrow struck the behemoth's body again. The behemoth's body lurched. Little by little, flesh started falling off. The behemoth twisted from the pain. Demonic aura emerged from the wound, but not as quickly as before. Tio's magic bullet aimed towards the spot where the flesh fell off. The behemoth's body shook. It seemed to be troubled. After the demon's mouth swallowed the remains of the dead beast, the behemoth lost the unrestrained magic that it had been enjoying until now. They could win. Croctor's forehead started burning. Combative spirit essence has been used. Your assimilation rate has risen. Croctor jumped off the ground. He stepped on the behemoth's tail and threw himself forward once again. The goal was the behemoth. Croctor jumped using all his strength while holding the great sword. He used the weight of gravity to shove the great sword deeply into the behemoth's back. Pu'ork. The great sword was stabbed up to its handle. The behemoth started experiencing spasms. Blood appeared on Croctor's face. Croctor grabbed the ogre slayer and twisted it. It caused another wound. There was a terrible sound. The screams of the beast shook the entire forest. The agitated behemoth opened its mouth. The demonic energy of the forest converged into the behemoth's mouth. It sucked in its breath. The behemoth was once again preparing the breath attack. Its goal was the enemy with arrows in front of it, Shakan. Croctor hung on the behemoth's back and looked at Shakan in front. Shakan didn't try to avoid it. He just aimed his bow towards the front. Shakan met Croctor's gaze and laughed. Q -u 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 -u. Soon the darkness of the breath covered his face. Croctor's vision was covered with darkness. The breath was bigger and stronger than before. The behemoth was squeezing out all of its power as a last resort. At that moment, in a corner of the darkness, one bright spot flew. It was a beam of light. Behemoth, the one who ruled the forest of creatures and divided the north from the rest of the continent. Then the darkness coming from the monster faded. The beam had gone straight through it. Croctor witnessed the light penetrating the core of darkness. It was a clear penetration. The source of the behemoth's power had collapsed due to Croctor. It was the end of the behemoth. Croctor rolled to the ground in the aftermath. The behemoth collapsed with the great sword in it. He pulled it out. Dead blood flowed from it. Croctor ran to Shakan. Shakan. Shakan was squirming in the middle of the land that had been swept away. Croctor approached. 
His eyes gazed far away before turning back to Cropter. His eyes were dim. Did you see? He smiled. Cropter nodded. It is the ultimate hunt. Cough. Cough. Yes, this is Shaken. Cropter touched Shaken's cheek. He couldn't bear to look down at the body. The area underneath Shaken's belly had completely disappeared. The demonic energy in his body tried to heal him, but he gradually lost his vitality and went limp. Shaken looked into the distance. Then he smiled. I did it, sons, Karina. It was a warm voice. A Shaken never leaves his enemies alive. He turned his head and said to Cropter. Orc warrior, gnome, pretty good. Cropter nodded. The life in Shaken's eyes gradually disappeared. They became out of focus. It was the sight of death. What did he see? Cropter asked, what is your name? Cropter wanted to remember his true name. Shaken's mouth rose. He whispered in a small voice, Shaken. Then his head fell down. The last Shaken hunter traversed death and entered the underworld as a nameless Shaken. The hunter who endured the pain for a long time to get revenge for his family. It was the death of a great man. Cropter closed Shaken's eyes. Cropter, you're safe. Tio rushed over. His body was also tattered because he was caught in the breath. Tio became silent as he saw Shaken. The silent Cropter patted Tio's shoulder. The quest to open the North has been completed. The North has been opened. The demonic energy blocking the North from the rest of the continent will gradually disappear. Ten years remain until it is fully opened. Fifty years remain until all the demonic energy is completely removed. The name of the hero who opened the North will become widely known on the continent. The name of the one who opened the North, the Orc Warrior Cropter. Cropter opened his mouth as the system messages popped up. No. Surprisingly, the output of system messages stopped. The name of the one who opened the North is Shaken. He spoke firmly, the great hunter Shaken. The system was silent for a moment. Then it surfaced again. I respect your will. The one who opened the North, the last of the Shaken clan, the name of the great hunter Shaken will shake the continent. The entire continent will remember his name. The Shaken Hunter class is open to users. Once all the hidden conditions are met, the user can change to the hidden class, Shaken Hunter. The name of the one who opened the North is Shaken. The Great Hunter, Shaken. Cropter nodded. I will keep watching your progress in the future. Oh, what brat? Who is it? A. Eh? This was the core of Elder Saga Corporation, the company that ran Elder Lord. It was the system control room that managed the core system, Albino. Park Jujin, the manager of this place was frantically shouting. No. How? Whose assimilation rate? Team leader, the lock on the system was just released. Up to 90%. It is unlocked. I heard. Park Jujin was hysterical. The system had once again become temporarily inaccessible. Albino's answer was the same as before. A user broke through the 90% assimilation rate. Access was temporarily blocked for both the system and the user's protection. Park Jujin threw away the documents. The researchers ran away. Find that bastard. Zankas took a sip from the cup of alcohol. A campfire cast shadows on his face. Zankas was sharing a fire with travelers he met during a hunt. The travelers handed meat to Zankas. He nodded to express his thanks. Then he heard the conversation between the travelers. The north was opened. Was it due to a hunter? Yes. The last Shaken hunter. He caught a monster blocking access to the north. Zankus's eyebrows twitched. The travelers felt his gaze and looked up. Why, do you know him? One of the travelers spoke in a friendly manner. They bumped into an orc hunter by chance but they had to maintain a minimum of courtesies. The orc was different from his appearance. A Shaken hunted the monster. That's right. What happened to the hunter? The rumor is. The traveler became nervous as he saw Zanka's intense gaze. He died with the monster. Zankas's face distorted. Then he looked into the air and laughed. 
there was a complicated expression on his face. In the end, he did it and died, that person. Did you know him? At one time, Zanka's eyes became distant. He was the most outstanding hunter Zankus knew. The Shakan hunter had been tougher than an orc, despite being human. He was the representative of tenacity. A hunter who aimed at his target, no matter what it took. Zankus wanted to be just like that. So he aimed for that hunter's back. Then he would be in a position to be praised by the hunter. But Zankus felt like the hunter's back was still far away. He heard the news that the hunter had entered the forest of creatures. The traveler asked, was he also called Shakan? He was a really great person. That's right. Zankus spoke. No. Huh. His real name isn't Shakan. Then. Zankus shook the cup. He gazed into it and recalled his first meeting with the hunter. Zankus had been a flamboyant young orc and looked down on the human. But he was defeated by him. When Zankus asked for his name with a feeling of admiration, the man became shy and avoided the answer. His name was ridiculous. No one would believe that it was the name of the greatest hunter. The travelers looked at Zankus with expectant eyes. Zankus laughed and opened his mouth, his real name.